a premier model has been added to the head of Mercedes luxurious long range line of sedans, the S Class. The S63 AMG is 30 kilowatts more powerful than its predecessor, but consumes 0.2 liters of gasoline less per 100 kilometers. The car has been restyled for more sportiness with a remodeled chassis, less weight, and 900 breathtaking Newton meters of torque. And for the first time, there's all wheel drive for the AMG's exclusive clientele. Simon Geiger from Mercedes explains that the AMG 63 targets customers who appreciate a large, safe car, but also value power, performance, and a sporty, distinguished individual look. The front end boasts, I'll pass you in class. The whole appearance of the AMG S series is sporty and sublime. The headlights look fierce. The carbon fiber here is not just for show, it also cuts the car's weight by 100 kilograms. Two striking lines add elegant flair to the sides. The understated rims are forged aluminum. Geiger notes that the side skirts seem to bring the car closer to the road. Four exhaust pipes at the rear are a typical trait that sets the AMG apart, and the rear apron has a sporty look. Assembly of the whole 5.5 liter V8 bi turbo engine is done by a single mechanic. That's a tradition for the AMG. The engine is the S63's highlight. It generates 430 kilowatts that can slam the two-ton all-wheel drive vehicle to 100 kilometers an hour in four seconds. Top speed is electronically limited to 250 kilometers an hour. The engine is AMG's most efficient eight-cylinder so far, but it still consumes 10.3 liters of super plus to travel 100 kilometers. Two large monitor screens also mean it's easy for the driver to keep track of the instruments and navigation. The S-Class is normally for long-distance highway driving, but if you switch to sport, mountains and tight curves are a cinch too. The S63 comes in two lengths. We're testing the long version, which is 13 centimeters longer than the shorter one. At 5.29 meters, it still performs astonishingly well on the Kitzbühel switchbacks, and the 4 all-wheel drive pays off when road conditions are difficult. The roomy interior is dominated by the wide dashboard. Wherever you look, the materials are the highest quality, but that's what you'd expect in this price category. The digital combined instrument panel is a colorful eye-catcher. The driver has all the essential information at a glance. In the middle of the dash, a fine analog clock shows the precise time. And little time is needed to shift through seven gears, thanks to the speed shift paddles on the steering wheel. The back seat is very roomy too. A trip in the AMG is comfortable. With the armrest down, you might think you're in a lounge. Electric sunscreens reinforce that impression. So how much of a sports car is this luxury sedan? Our test driver notes that even 100 kilograms lighter, the AMG is still quite heavy and can't turn an S-Class car into a real sports car, but it doesn't aim or claim to. So the AMG has made the S-Class a bit more versatile, but at a steep price. The version we tested will set you back more than 152,000 euros. Ford recently opened the gates of its Belgian test track to journalists. At the Lomo Proving Ground, the automaker showed off its latest assist systems, designed to make driving safer and easier. First, we take a look at its enhanced park assist system. It allows the driver to simply get out of the car and park it from outside the vehicle. 
This research engineer says to imagine he's just come home and stopped the car in front of the garage. Now he can open the doors comfortably, get out of the vehicle and control it using his smartphone. He wants the vehicle to drive into the garage automatically, but he says it would also work with a parking space. He just presses the button on the remote or the smartphone and the vehicle starts to move. As if by magic, the steering wheel turns, guiding the car into the garage. And right away the vehicle comes to a halt and the engine should shut off. Then, when he returns to use the car again, he just uses the remote to back it out of the garage again. For security reasons, someone must sit in the passenger seat when testing this prototype. But struggling to get in and out of tight parking spaces could soon be a thing of the past. The Ford engineer says he can open the doors wide without fear of hitting anything, get in the car and drive away. In the early days, Ford's park assist could only parallel park. An ultrasonic sensor searched for a suitable parking space and took care of the steering. But the driver was still responsible for accelerating and braking. Then the system was expanded to include perpendicular parking. So Ford's Pim van der Jacht says the next logical step was that the driver not even have to be in the car at all. He believes that in many cases it's safer to be outside the vehicle. For instance, on a busy street, it's much easier to see when traffic's coming and stop trying to park. He says everything can be controlled by the key or via smartphone. Another system of the future is car-to-car -car communication, which allows for the transmission of data from one vehicle to another. It can warn drivers who aren't braking or have stopped for no apparent reason. The system is based on simple wireless technology. If installed into many vehicles, it could save lives. This research engineer demonstrates how car-to-car -car communication works. He says the vehicles can exchange data to get a better overview of the current traffic situation, allowing Ford to offer various applications to improve safety and traffic efficiency. Drivers are informed much earlier and can avoid potentially dangerous situations. Und somit können wir den Fahrer wesentlich früher informieren und ähm, Gefahrensituationen vermeiden. Ford glaubt und die ganze Tim van der Jagd says Ford and the rest of the industry believe that when vehicles can tell one another where they're going and how fast, this could prevent many accidents and represent a major improvement in vehicle safety. Und das ist, bringt sehr viel für die Fahrzeugsicherheit. Cars could also recognize deer crossing and warn the traffic behind them about animals on the road. In future, road construction sites could be equipped with transmitters to warn vehicles about the site's location and changes to traffic routes. That's important because construction sites increase the risk of accidents. But Ford would like the system to do even more. In terms of safety applications, he says a car receives data from other vehicles about sudden braking, for example. In future, he could imagine the car would automatically swerve to avoid a collision. Another Ford prototype can do this already. Three radar units, ultrasonic sensors, and a camera scan not only the 200 meters of road ahead of the vehicle, but also the neighboring lanes, in case the car needs to avoid an obstacle. This Ford engineer says here, we're approaching an obstacle, such as the end of a traffic jam. The sensors register it and warn the driver. He says if the driver doesn't react, the car will automatically swerve to avoid the obstacle. Should the driver then start to steer, he can overrule the automatic steering and set the course himself. But Ford's groundbreaking research is not just restricted to assist systems. It's also developing alternative propulsion systems. For instance, this e-wheel drive Fiesta is powered by two wheel hub drives located in the rear wheel arches. They were developed by automotive supplier Scheffler. 
The Fiesta e -wheel Jörg Wald says his firm produced the Fiesta e-wheel drive in conjunction with Ford. He calls it a development center on wheels. It uses Scheffler's wheel hub drive system, which allowed them to fit most of the engine compartment into the wheel arches. He says everything you need to drive and brake can be found within the rims. Wald stresses that it's still a concept car and represents the technology of the distant future rather than tomorrow. While the engine technology, the wheel hub drive, does not work and could be put into series production, he feels that an entirely new vehicle architecture is needed to highlight the strengths of the car and its wheel hub drive and of course that will take time es eben auch Sinn ganz neue Fahrzeugarchitektur anzufassen und das ist eben Thema da sind wir eher bei übermorgen But the Fords of the future should be safe comfortable and emissions free Hyundai is launching the second generation of the i10. It's been redesigned by the company's European Development Center in Rüsselsheim. Hyundai has moved production to Turkey. The exterior dimensions of the subcompact have grown, increasing legroom in the back seat. The quality of the i10's interior has been upgraded. It now has four feature levels and can compete with higher classes of vehicle. In Germany, the basic model will be available for under 10,000 euros starting in November. Audi has given its luxury limousine A8 a facelift. The most powerful and sportiest model, the S8, also profits from this. Its 4-liter TFSI motor produces 382 kilowatts and a maximum torque of 650 newton meters. It sprints from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.1 seconds. A real highlight of the new S8 is its headlights and Matrix LED technology with precision electronic control and dynamic blinkers. In Germany, the new S8 starts at 114,700 euros. Suzuki's SX4 S-Cross is the latest addition to the car maker's selection of models. The new version is distinctly larger and more comfortable than the previous SX4, which will still be available in a classic version. We're testing an 88 kilowatt diesel. The broad range of features stand out. Jörg Machalitsky from Suzuki touts the large 430 liter trunk and a full range of what are usually extras, even in the basic version. For example, cruise control, a speed limiter, a standard start-stop system, and air conditioning. And more is available for a bit more money. Our test car has a navigation system, two-zone automatic air conditioning, heated leather seats front and back, and electric windows all around. And there's an extra in the top-of-the-line model available in Germany that our test driver Matthias Kurat is crazy about. He loves the huge panoramic glass sunroof. It opens very wide, providing a feeling almost like a convertible. But then you have to live with the sound of the wind. The SX4 S-Cross is available with front or intelligent all-wheel drive with special programs for snow and sand. But it's most at home on the road. It needs 12 seconds to sprint up to 100 kilometers an hour. Fuel consumption in the two-wheel drive diesel model averages 4.2 liters per 100 kilometers. The car's dynamics are satisfying. Our test driver says he can't complain about the power provided by the little 1.6-liter diesel engine in the SX4 he is driving. A gasoline engine is also available, also with 88 kilowatts of power and fuel consumption of 5.4 liters per 100 kilometers. The exterior has an off-road look with matte silver trim on the front. as well as on the rear and the door sills. The car clears the ground by about 17 centimeters. The standard trunk holds 430 liters of luggage. That's nothing to sneeze at. It's enough for a country outing with the family. 
but on winding country roads, the springy suspension makes itself felt. Mata says he personally would prefer tighter steering, but reflects that the buyer of an SX4 S-Cross is probably not planning to race with it anyway. Mata's found no real weaknesses in the SX4 S-Cross. Everything is solidly crafted. Nothing creaks or rattles. The starting price for the compact crossover in Germany is 19,490 euros. Depending on the extras and drivetrain, this can rise to as much as 30,000 euros. Our tester says the almost 20,000 euro starting price may seem a bit high to some potential buyers, especially because there is competition in this segment. But he says that if you consider the equipment and furnishings here, it's still a good offer. The original VW Beetle wasn't very fast or flashy, though it was reliable. But even a bug can change its spots. Our test driver says it might seem a bit laughable to have a roll bar, bucket seats, and a racing harness in a Beetle. But then this isn't just any VW bug. It's a rally Beetle, and he's going to find out more about it. Even though Volkswagen designed it as an affordable family car, in the 1960s and 70s, skillful mechanics transformed the little Beetle into a pocket rocket. Christoph Bauer says that the tuners and stylists really did a makeover on this rally Beetle. The 145 horsepower engine propels you up the mountains, he says, so much so that your tears of joy are shed horizontally. The first souped-up Beetles appeared in 1951. Seven years later, Theo Decker made a business of it. In the workshops of TDE, or Theo Decker Essen, he produced almost all the parts used to tune Beetles himself. Our test driver says the last original model Beetle rolled off the assembly lines in Mexico in 2003. He notes few external changes were made to turn this one into a rally car, like these headlights and the extra oil cooler. But he says the really sporty parts are underneath, the chassis and the motor. Here they bored the cylinders to get as many cc's as possible and installed two big carburetors. But our tester warns Germans wanting to soup up their old Beetles to do it in a way that fits the car's era, or the vehicle inspection agency could revoke its vintage car status. Naturally, our Beetle from the Zeithaus Car Museum in Wolfsburg was tuned according to Theo Decker's original methods. This little powerhouse has a top speed of 170 kilometers per hour. In its day, it sold for some 18,000 marks, around three times as much as the basic model. The spare cockpit attests to its motorsport status, as does its 2-liter, 145-horsepower boxer engine. While performance at the lower engine speed range is still quite restrained, the motor really comes into its own starting at 3,000 RPMs. Christoph says it's not just the powerful engine and the sound that let you know this bug was meant for motorsports. He says the brakes are extremely stiff and so is the suspension, which means there's even a hint of comfort. But he says that's not what this car is about. It's about motorsports. The Beetle was never designed to be an off-roader, even though the car is robust and reliable enough to take quite a beating. The Salzburg Beetle wrote motorsport history, scoring many victories at rallies between 1966 and 
Christo says that while it's clear the Beetle was a groundbreaking car, this rally Beetle did one better. It helped the most famous and beloved Volkswagen of all time make the leap into motorsport. So it's a true milestone in automotive history. Souped-up compacts are common on German roads today, following the trend kicked off by the rally Beetle.